In this video, we'll see an example of using integrals to compute areas in polar coordinates. So here's our example. We're asked to find the area of the region inside the curve r equals 4 plus 3 cosine theta. The technical name for this curve is called a limaçon, but you don't really need to know that. It's just giving you the information uh, in the problem. So the very first thing that we want to do is find a graph of this region. It's going to be very difficult for us to sort of intuitively try to set up the right integral for this area without having a good picture. Mathematica can be very helpful for doing this for us. Here's what it would look like in Mathematica. So we use the command polar plot, making sure to use capital letters for our commands, square brackets, and so on. I've called my variable t because I don't have to type out the whole word theta if I don't want to. In fact, I could have called it x or y or any other variable that I like. But I like to use t because I'm in my brain I know that I'm thinking about the variable being called theta. So now we've got a picture of what the area is that we want. So we want the whole area inside this shape. Now anything that we can do using symmetry or any kind of simplification is going to help us here. So what you might notice is that, in fact, we could cut our curve in half along the x-axis here. And so, in fact, we would just have to integrate from 0 to pi instead of all the way from 0 to 2 pi and just double our answer. So that's what we're going to do. So remember that the basic formula for the area in polar coordinates is that area is equal to the integral from alpha to beta of 1 half times your function f of theta squared d theta. So we know what our function is, and we've just figured out our alpha and beta, so we're ready to go. So we set up our integral to be the integral from 0 to pi of 1 half times the function, which is 4 plus 3 cosine theta squared d theta. But remember that because we used our symmetry, we're going to take that answer and double it. So 2 times that integral is going to be our entire area. Conveniently, the 2 and the 1 half cancel each other out, so we just get the integral from 0 to pi. Now, when we multiply out 4 plus 3 cosine theta, when we square that, we're going to make sure that we're actually multiplying that out. And we're going to end up with 16 plus 24 cosine theta plus 9 cosine squared of theta. Okay, so now we have to take the antiderivative of that function. Antiderivative of 16, that's going to be easy. We just get 16 theta antiderivative of 24 cosine theta, that will just be 24 sine theta, and then 9 cosine squared of theta, that we're going to have to think about a little bit harder. So we'll evaluate these functions from 0 to pi, but now let's think separately about the integral from 0 to pi of 9 cosine squared theta d theta. So when we've got that even power of cosine, what we have to remember is that we need to use our half angle formula. The half angle formula is going to tell us that the cosine squared of theta is actually equal to 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And that's just something that we need to have remembered back from Calc 2. So that's what we need to do. All right, let's, before we get into that integral, though, let's actually plug in our pi and our 0 into these, uh, this first part of our function. So this is going to give us 16 times pi plus 24 times the sine of pi minus 16 times 0 plus 24 times the sine of 0. Now, sine of 0 is 0, 16 times 0 is 0, sine of pi is 0, so we just get 16 pi. So we're going to take our 16 pi and add to that whatever we get for this integral. So I've run out of room, so we need to start on a new page. Okay, so we got up to 16 pi plus the integral from 0 to pi of 9 cosine squared of theta d theta. And what we know is that we've got to use half angle formula. So that's 0 to pi, 9 times the quantity 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. We'll take that 9 and that 1 half and pull that out. So we've got 9 halves times the integral from 0 to pi of 1 plus cosine 2 theta d theta. And now that's a pretty easy antiderivative. Antiderivative of 1 is theta. Antiderivative of cosine 2 theta is 1 half sine of 2 theta. And we're going to plug in 0 and pi and subtract. So 
So that gives us 9 halves times pi plus 1 half sine of 2 pi minus 0 plus 1 half times the sine of 2 times 0. Now, sine of 0 is 0, sine of 2 pi is 0, so that's just 9 halves pi. 9 pi over 2, and then the 16 pi we had from before, 16 pi is 32 pi over 2 plus 9 pi over 2. That's going to give us 41 pi over 2. And that's our final answer. So very often, because the, uh, the formula for areas and polar coordinates involves that squaring, integrals involving sine squared and or cosine squared are going to come up fairly frequently. So just remember those half-angle formulas. The other half-angle formula, which we didn't use in this problem but is good to know, is that the sine squared of theta is 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta. So that, together with the half-angle formula that we used here, the 1 plus cosine 2 theta, those are going to be things that you're going to see fairly frequently in these kinds of problems. But once we get the integral set up, now we're just integrating just like we did back in Calc 1 and Calc 2. So really the, the only new thing in this section involving areas is the setup.